I'm Rayton's son, 22, born in a family of three, and I'm the firstborn. So today I just want to tell people as to why maybe I'm an alcoholic and why I will never see my mother again. So the story begins in 2007, I was six, and uh, my dad was married to my mom, of course. I was, I was seven, and we were already three in our family. The last born was like breastfeeding. So it happened that uh, after some times, uh, my mom started quarreling with my dad, like they want to share the house calls. But my dad was ready to take care of everything in the house. Like, I mean, my mom was supposed to be a housewife. So to my mom, she kind of felt like she also wanted to work. So they had conflicts over time to time. So after conflict, they divorced. And I remember there's a day they fought and uh, I just heard the voice of my mom told me, I won't say my real name that she called me with, but I say, I just used my son. And I was like, my son, bring me a sweater. And she was outside. Now that's after fighting, she has been chased away. Um, then my dad told me, if you try and go to give the sweater, just ensure you follow your mom. In real sense, I didn't want to follow my mom because my mom was violent and used to beat us so much. But just the discipline of a mother. Me as a kid, I used to think that I was not supposed to be beaten. Um, after that, they talked through the phone and my mom, my, my dad decided that if I'm the one you don't want to see, let me go, I'll be bringing food, just give me a key, then I'll send you money, school fees. The only thing that I want you to do as their mother, just be visiting their school and paying their school fees. Uh, I'll be paying the school fees, but you, you just be going there for the meeting purposes. Because I want to be available, I'll be at work. Uh, they agreed that. Then. Uh, my dad left. Then on the second day, I remember, my mom was not able to stay with us. I don't know why, because everything was catered for. The rent, the water bills, the electricity bills, the school fees, the, the food, and some money, you know? Because my dad was really hard working and he has been really working so hard. Um, I just want to take you to a point where you understand why I will never see my mother again. Um, so the story continues. After some time, that's two days after, my mom felt like she could not stay with us, so she took us to Nairobi where my grandma was staying then we were like why don't you want to stay with us but in real sense I really enjoyed staying with my grandma because you know the life of kids and grandma man it's so amazing yeah if you're born in Africa I hope the story is the same I don't know about other continents so I stayed with my grand we stayed with our grandma the two of us the last one was left because he was still breastfeeding and uh, the two of us were taken to Nairobi so you understand the issue of school what we are, you know um, in, any, in any place we went for another school we used to start afresh. So in the, like three schools, we started afresh. So when we were taking to Nairobi, that's where my grandma was, my dad received a call. Like, I have your kids here, their mother brought them here and left. I remember the last word that my mom told me was, I will bring you maize when I come back to Nairobi. Um, just before I say I've never seen her till date, I still want to take you to why I will never see her again. So my mom went back to Meru. She started working on her own. Then the last born was there. Then my dad was like, why did you have to bring the kids back? Okay, if you don't want even to stay with them because I've realized already you don't want to stay with me let me get back so after after now my dad receiving us and telling my grandma everything that I had to pay as bills in the other hand I'll be paying on this side so if you can stay with my kids it's all right but my grandma who used to work used to get out of the house very early in the morning and uh, come back late in the evening so in most cases we were like we were like uh, let me stay with my grandma we study here in Nairobi then um, Maybe later in life, we can maybe go and see my mom because my mom promised to come back and bring us maize. Um, after some times, that's, uh, that was 2008, 2009, all that's happening. Then in 2010, my grandma got uh, retirement. So she was given, my dad took this pension, went and bought a land in some parts in Okambani. Then uh, after there, we were like, that's where we'll be staying with our grandma. Now we are going to the fourth school. We started another life in Kambani. I want to show you that life has never been easy there because my, my dad was struggling. Because my dad would go like for six months and not coming back, just sending money. Because by that time, I remember my dad used to send us 500. This 500, we, we just buy maize, 10 kilograms. Uh, we buy beans, like two kilograms, then uh, soap to wash our clothes as we go to school. The only thing that I know my dad has never failed, yeah, about school. School fees was paid in time, and when he had no money used, he could communicate with the school administration to ensure that we are not sent home. So, uh, that was a struggle with the food, you know. So after some times, my dad received a call from where my mom was because she was staying, and uh, my dad was told that your, your last one 
he is struggling. So please come and pick him, then you can take care of him because he, his mom is struggling a lot with alcohol and is not yet settled. So please come for your son. Then my dad willingly went and took our last born, then brought our last born to where we were staying. We were so happy to see him because we left him even before he knew how to talk. But when he was coming back, he was talking to us, but he only knew one language of which we did not understand the language. So we had time to teach our little brother how to speak in Swahili and to go to school and all that. So after some time, um, we were like, uh, after staying the three of us in where our grandma was, we had to, we had now my mom, my dad has, had to go to Nairobi to start working from there. So he just used to send money to us and to monitor us in school because my grandma was getting older and older. Like he was, she was 76. So that was 2010, 2011. In 2012, um, we received a call from where my mom was because we had that my mom was to be married again by another guy who was working in the army. Then my mom lied that she had no kids and uh, of course we were there the three of us but my mom was too young and she never looked like she had ever had any kids so to be honest my mom was to be married so she was given a certain, a certain amount to maybe you know like when you get a new catch like you have to take care of her what or him so uh, and i'm sorry to say this after my mom lied that she had never had kids and we were there living so the time so we, were, we received a call and my, from my uncle, from the side of my mother, and we were told that uh, our mom got an accident. Then we were all like, what happened? So our dad, my dad took us to, to the sitting room and told us, I have something to tell you, and I hope no one of you will panic or cry, because if you have to cry, you will not cry in front of me, you will just get out. So we were called and we were told that uh, your mother I received a call from your uncle and I was told your mother. So we were like, our mother wants to come back or what's happening? So we were told that she got an accident. Then we were all like, oh, and then what happened? Then we were told by bad luck, she's no more. She died. And that's how we received the, the news of my mother. But to be the saddest part is we were never allowed to go to the funeral. And that's something that has been disturbing me and to share it out with people maybe have gone to the same story because we stayed for a long time without seeing our mother and the moment she died we never got a chance to go and say goodbye but later in life when I grew up when I was like um, let's say 17, 18, 19 somewhere there I can't remember very well I, I went to visit the, the, the grave then in the worst thing is that we found that they have also built another another thing on that uh, grave. It's like nothing happened. So we had to quarrel a lot with the family. And uh, I never felt good about that. And that's something that has been disturbing me. But because life is life and life has to go on, that's the will of God. And uh, yeah, so my advice is if you have kids, never abandon your kids to go and enjoy life. Because you brought these human beings to the earth. They have life to live, they, have, they deserve happiness, they deserve, they deserve the love of both parents. And if you tend to, it tend to happen that you will never give your kid the love that they deserve and you're still alive, I think even God will never allow you to have a life on earth. And that's the story of how I will never see my mother again.